I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and I want to say thank you to the people who are about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. There's before I get into this talking about Richard Fain was wrong about Tesla. I found some very interesting. There is a guy by the name of Ken Dash Nuff who is literally copying videos off Kevin Samuel's channel and he's making money off of the late dead Camuel, Kevin Samuels. It, it, it's kind of funny because Kevin and apparently there's no one who can access his content and file copyright claims, but this person is making more than likely the channel is only a few months old, but in a year, this person could be making a hundred thousand dollars a year off of Kevin Samuel's work. It's pretty interesting. But let me go ahead and start here. Um, Richard Fain, and this isn't a hit piece or I'm not going to criticize the overall theology of Richard Fain because I agree with a lot of the stuff he says. However, a few months ago, he made a video talking about he was going how Tesla was going to make him millions of dollars. And if you remember, I was going to do the trading. I was going to create a new trading channel. And when I heard Richard say that, my first thought was I was going to short Tesla. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, the market's funky. That's one. Number two, Elon Musk is distracted. And I know from personal experience, when the leader of a company is distracted, usually it ends up with the company losing money. I've done it once again, my car rental business, prime example. So why did Richard make this prediction that Tesla was going to keep surging? I understand that Richard is a long-term stock investor and what I believe is that people are stuck on the narrative of the last 11 years. The last 11 years have been an incredible bull run in the stock market. But let me go ahead and tell you something. In the last the dot-com crash, there was a lot of companies they're still in business. They're still making money, but they have not returned to their all time stock highs, which means that this company's stock price has never returned to its highest stock price ever. And there's companies from the dot com era. And so I'm going to give you something to think about now. In the world of business, nothing stays the same. Nothing is static. Nothing is um, going to stay the same. And at the moment, Tesla is the world's largest electric vehicle maker. In the future, that's going to change. And I'm going to submit to you this theory. Let's say Elon Musk remains distracted. Uh, honestly, I think Elon Musk is trying to get out of Tesla. I think Elon Musk wants to go ahead and do something else. But if Elon Musk exits Tesla at the moment, the, the stock will literally collapse. It will literally collapse. So he's got to stay there. And knowing what I know about business and things are not staying the same, that at some point, Tesla's going to have robust and vigorous competition. Don't know because for me, for me personally, I am not a hater of Tesla, but I'm not a fan. Um, I feel that the cars are pretty, they're pretty plain in the interior. It's nothing sexy, but once again, this is personal test. Uh, I would probably never buy a Tesla. 
you know, the whole technology charging your cars and all this other stuff. I'm not not exactly on board with all that. And for all of you Tesla fanboys who feel that gas powered cars are going to disappear, I'm going to submit to you gas powered cars are not going to disappear for at least 30 years, at least. So I don't care what California is doing. I really don't care. Uh, all they're going to do is just create an extreme used car market in California. But at some point, Tesla is not going to be the king of EV automakers. And understand, before the pandemic, Tesla was about to go bankrupt. Before the pandemic. So Richard and other people are looking back they're looking back well pat and if you get any stock uh, perspectives it will tell you in the language past performance is not an indicator of future performance it's just not now going on with my theory let's say tesla stock price never returns to its former high now i know that for many of you Tesla stock boys, you're gonna be like pulling your hair out and it's like, but it's gotta go up. Really? A few months ago, I told you guys that Bitcoin was gonna crash hard. And guess what? It crashed hard. And I'm about to go ahead in this video and say it again. Bitcoin's gonna crash even harder. It's gonna crash even harder. Now, why was Richard wrong and once again, I didn't short the stock because I didn't get into trading, so I can't prove that. But I'm going to hope that you trust me on that. Why was I correct and Richard Fain was wrong? I didn't look at past performance. I looked at the current marketplace and the current marketplace is a hot mess. And I looked at Elon Musk's behavior. There's only so long that a CEO can keep acting like that before it backfires on the CEO and the company. And this whole thing with buying Twitter. I think Elon has bitten off more than he can chew because here's, the, I'll give you some guidelines. Would I buy advertising on Twitter? Absolutely not. I wouldn't, but once again, I haven't dived into buying advertising on Twitter, seeing the metrics and all those other conversions, I don't know. But that's the only way that Twitter can make money with advertisers. And right now, YouTube advertising is king of the internet, followed closely by Facebook and followed by TikTok, then Bing, and Yahoo and then Amazon, there, there, there's a whole um, list of people that you can buy advertising from. So my thoughts is that Elon Musk in this Twitter experiment is going to fail. And Elon Musk has, is, has a publicly documented nervous breakdown where he lost his mind. And this is kind of what I see happening. Elon Musk got Twitter and Elon Musk knew what he was doing with PayPal. He knew what he was doing with Tesla. He knew what he was doing with SpaceX, Solar City, not so much. And once again, I will use um, the car rental business. I came outside of my wheelhouse and look what happened. It was a complete and other shit show. And Elon Musk has come outside of his wheelhouse. There's a vast difference between running PayPal, because here's the thing, PayPal made money because every time there's a transaction, they got paid. Tesla makes money because they sell a car, they get paid. SpaceX makes money. Every time they send a rocket up, someone has to pay for that payload. Twitter doesn't have a pay for performance aspect to it. So Elon Musk has completely left his wheelhouse and I feel that Elon Musk is going to fail with Twitter. 
and this may send him into a deep depression. And oh my, what's going to happen with Tesla? If I was Elon Musk, I would be, and not to say he's not doing it, I would be grooming a new CEO for Tesla ASAP because Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos exited the CEO position of Amazon and Amazon kept going because that was part of the plan. I don't know if Elon Musk has a succession plan, but Elon Musk is closely tied to Tesla. And Elon Musk behavior of late has been erratic. It's been funky, it's been crazy. Go ahead with the Bitcoin pump and dump. Go ahead with the Dogecoin pump and dump. So I'm betting that Elon Musk is gonna fail. And I'm betting that Richard Fain is going to lose money on the Tesla stock. I don't care how old, because once again, 2023 is going to be a funky year for a lot of things. Once again, we're entering into the real recession. And once we get that critical component of layoffs, this is when this recession is going to get nasty. This is when it's going to be ugly. So let's talk about me and my wheelhouse. Like, why didn't I go forward with the investing? Uh, I learned a lot from the car rental business. And I've learned that my skill sets are more closely aligned with making money online than running a brick and mortar business. Because that's what the car rental business was. It was a brick and mortar business. They used an online platform, but it was a brick and mortar business. And... For me to learn how to trade, I was looking at years of learning, getting to the market, doing back testing. And honestly, I could spend way less money, start a new business on the internet, and I'm talking spend five or ten thousand dollars starting this new internet business and make way more money than I would ever make trading and make it faster, quicker, and cleaner and have a much cheaper cost basis because one of the things I've noticed is for the people who actually show you their accounts, everyone who's making 25, 30, 40, $50,000 per day trading has a million dollar trading account. They have a seven figure trading account. This is something I peeped out and People who can be highly skilled in trading, who have small accounts, because their accounts are small, they can only make so much money. Give you a good example. The guy who made 120 million on the Bed, Bath and Beyond play. He started with 25 million. He didn't start with 10,000 or 5,000 or $1,000. Now, argumentally, if he did that same play, that same strategy with $20,000, he would only made a hundred because he, he had a 5X return. And this is what the hedge funds and the banks, they're not playing with small accounts. They're playing with billion dollar accounts. And when you're got like, say a $10 billion account, and you can get a 10% 10 return, that's 100 million. So that's another reason that I just decided not to go with trading because here's the thing, I have the money, but that car rental business kept whispering in my ear, you don't know what you're doing. You could put a million dollars in a trading account and you can lose all of your money. That scared the crap out of me. That scared me so much that I completely um, deleted the trading channel. Uh, I still have the accounts because I can use them for other purposes in the future. But once I really sat down and thought about it, everything said, stay away from trading don't do the trading, just back away and keep your money safe. And that's what I decided to do. Getting back to why Richard was wrong. 
Richard's a pretty smart guy. Um, I have no overall critiques of the guy, but Richard is operating on past performance. And I'm operating on current activity. And current activity is gonna give you way more information than past performance. Um, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, how many Super Bowls? Six, seven? Past performance. This year is arguably one of the worst seasons that Tom Brady has had since he began playing football. Tom Brady's old. Tom Brady's skill sets is declining. And Tampa Bay Bucks got rid of, you know, Gronk retired. And so there's other issues. But going forward, one of the reasons that if I had did what was in my mind was to short Tesla, I would have made money. Because I knew when Richard put those videos out, the Tesla was going down. I knew this. So, you know, part of that makes me feel maybe I should have did the trading. And then when I look at the, um, the whole process, I understand that the trading world is full of scams. I found another girl who was a cop and she started Forex trading and she claims to make 100K in a month. Okay. Once again, I don't know her trading account size. I don't know her account. And I, I just kind of peep her Instagram and stuff. And three years ago, she blew up a she blew up a ten thousand dollar account three years ago so she went from blowing up a ten thousand dollar account she blew up several accounts and that when you go to her instagram and you go way back that's the real person talking at that point she was real then she started hanging with q banks then you know she started she created a trading course she created one-on-ones and i understand the game if you can fake enough success online on youtube instagram you can get people to buy your trading signals your course your group whatever and um i strongly strongly believe that the money because she has money she drives a nice car she lives in a nice house she has an investment property i don't think that came from trading i think that came from selling of her course and I don't really want to be affiliated or aligned with that stuff. I just don't, I just don't. So that's another reason that I am not getting into trading. I'm not doing trading, but I do believe given enough time. And also I am 50, how old am I? 56, I'm 56 years old. Um, I'm not looking to get into anything where literally I got to start at the ground level. I, I'm just, you know, cause patient wise, cause essentially what I would have had to do was get up every day, spend two hours back testing and studying. And, and I was like opportunity cost. So let's say I spent 80 hours a week, you know, learning how to trade. That same 80 hours a week could create me an eight figure business. Same time. And what I know about investing and your money working for you and trading, the vast majority of traders do not make six figures a year. And I'm talking about the successful ones. There is a group of people who have the skill sets, they know how the markets work. And because they have the limitation of not having enough capital to trade the way that they want to trade, they don't make the kind of money that I make. They don't. And they can't do the things that I can do. And that, that's another thing. You know, once again, there are a lot of people online who know how to trade, who know how to work the markets, who know how to extract money out of the markets, but the majority of them, in my opinion, make chump change. I'm not interested in making an extra two or three thousand dollars a month. Not interested in that. I'm not interested in making an extra ten thousand dollars a month. 
if whatever I get into doesn't have the potential to make six figures per month up to seven figures per month, I'm just not interested. I'm not interested. I mean, it just, it, to me, that would be hustling backwards. So, you know, my best month ever, I made $360,000. So anything that is less than, or has the, the potential to do six figures a month, I'm just not interested in it. And the trading lifestyle, I, I, all I see when I look at trading is a, on Instagram is a bunch of fast cars. And this is something else, too. The majority of these guys do not live in a very nice house. They have a night. They may have a Lambo or, or, or a McLaren. But when you look at their office set up of their home, they're always in some small ass apartment. None of them. Well, most of them, there are some that do have nice houses, but see, that's the sign to me of people making money that, you know, you, you have a nice house. You don't have to have a mansion, but you know, where you live should be luxurious. In my opinion, um, I had the million dollar house before I got the Porsche and that's the way that I feel that you should go. But once again, my prediction is 2023 is going to be a worse year for the stock market. Stock market's going to go lower and Bitcoin is going to crash even more. Cryptocurrency is going to crash anymore because we're in a situation where the monetary policy that existed for the last 11 years has changed. It has changed and anyone is acting until the monetary policy goes back to what it was, extremely low interest rates, plenty of cheap money. The market's going to be funky. It's just going to be funky. So, you know, like I said, Richard, he's not he's not stupid. He's not stupid at all. And I, I think that Richard is starting to wake up because I've seen some stuff on Richard's channel. Once again, this is just an observation that when Richard really started to make money like Graham Stephan, things changed. Now, what I mean by that, Richard used to finance his cars. Honestly, my opinion is Richard didn't have the cash money to buy these cars without having to liquidate stock. Then he came on YouTube. He started his YouTube business and now he his last car, he paid cash. You know, it's kind of funny when you start making real money, your behavior changes. He did not finance his last car. He actually paid cash because between his YouTube channel, I think he makes 20,000 a month from his YouTube channel and his investing in the Webull affiliates. I think he's made like, you know, $500,000 a year on top of whatever retirement situation he has. Graham Stephan, Graham Stephan. If you didn't know, Graham Stephan's engaged. He left that cheap, frugal lifestyle once he hooked up with a chick. Very interesting. And at some point, when you're making so much money, does it make sense for you to wear a cheap T-shirt when you make four or $5,000 per day? In some cases, I think, I think he's making like $10,000, $15,000 per day. That's just stupid to be that damn cheap when you got that kind of money coming in. Once again, the pathologically cheap, in my opinion, have mental issues. They have mental issues because once again, I lived in a neighborhood full of millionaires and people with money spend this money. This whole thing of this, this lie of the frugal millionaire, it cracks me up because if you got money, why are you going to live like the, this guy who the janitor who, who, who had this big stock portfolio, he wore a worn out coat. And I think this is crap that poor people tell themselves to feel, feel better that, yeah, he got a lot of money, but he just like me. He didn't buy a new coat. He didn't buy a Ferrari. He's just like me. You tell yourself to, so you can be more relatable. And um, I think it's crap because once again, I lived in a neighborhood where most of the women didn't work. You know why they didn't work? Because their husband made so much money they didn't have to work. And this whole lie that 
everyone is super frugal that's rich and got money and they just choose to stack their money and live in a normal house it cracks me up because it's a lie it's a lie it, it's just a simple lie but once again graham stephan has made many many changes since he started making that money and richard fain has made many changes since he started making real money so that's just my analysis of the situation that um there's one guy um dang bowtie nation he's the only one that i've seen that put out guidance about not buying on the dip uh the dude is joseph hoke joseph hoke i believe he's about 44 45 years old he's been through a few things and he put up a youtube video don't buy on the dip just continue to fund your trading account and have money on standby when the opportunity's right which makes sense but he's not saying buy on the dip keep buying because as the real estate trapper said the dip got dippier people bought on the dip and it dipped again richard fain bought on the dip and what did it do it dipped again so that's just my thoughts and considerations on what's going on and you know once again you can go ahead and invest in the stock market and buy on the dip if you want to in 2023 i understand i have a strong strong opinion that you're going to regret <laughs> buying on the dip in 2023 so that's all i got for you guys i'll talk to you later